inside of Tad Motors. Uh, the total area is about 16,000 square meters. And uh, we have just finished building the perimeter wall. We have started uh, building the first uh, assembling hall. And after uh, middle, uh, beginning of May, next year, I think the whole site will fall with building because we are not only going to assembling, but we are going to manufacturing. So we need more uh, space for manufacturing. But even if we think this place is not enough, we might need some more places. So <clears throat> this place now we tend to do the first uh, cars. And in the meantime, when we start, uh, uh, when we start building the other areas, we'll uh, continue with assembling here and also that one. <coughs> so that's it. And yeah, it's nice place, very good area. And we hope to get more. Locals have benefit, and directly or indirectly, uh, because of the labor. This company have been paid people a salary which have never paid in Kenya uh, and give them, give them lunch during the lunch, uh, lunch hour. These are approximately, they have been paying uh, laborers 850 because of 700 uh, it is for them, for the salary and 150 for lunch. Uh, and also uh, for the experts, they have been paid 1500 1200 according to the expedition so we, we are uh, as uh, we as locals we have really uh, benefited from this company oh tad to see it's one of those situations where we're at a restaurant and i came across this very bubbly personality uh, we're literally sitting next to each other and i thought you know what this is a guy that i could probably work with and we started chatting at the restaurant and then we swat we switched um business cards and then i met him the next day and then when he told me his story and who he was and his pure energy levels if i'm being honest with you i back people and i love concepts but it's really the people is really what really interests me In the busy streets of Addis Ababa, among the Toyotas and Hyundais, a few cars stand out. They are Awash, Abai, and Tekeze, named after Ethiopia's great rivers. But these are not imports. They were born here, in Ethiopia, through the vision of one man who dared to dream that his country could build its own cars. I was exporting used cars from Holland to Ethiopia, as all diasporas, most of diasporas were doing. I was doing a lot, so, but I was just talking with my friends and I said, no, instead of sending all these old rubbish cars, why don't you go back and try to assemble new cars? So with that idea, I, the plan for Holland car was started in 2004, January. His story began far from Europe's industries. Born in Ethiopia, young Tadase longed for higher education abroad, but living was never simple. His journey started on the Red Sea, aboard a ship owned by a family connection. He was not a professional seaman. He worked where he could, taking odd jobs on board, enduring long days and sleepless nights. For more than a year, he lived this hard life clinging to nothing more than hope. Actually, my dream was to set an assembling plant so that we don't have to import these old used cars, so that we'll be, well, be service assembling, and in the near future to set up, you know, manufacture our own cars there so that we will not be depend on imported cars from other countries. And also, of course, bring the technology, you know, manufacturing is uh, the engine of the economy in all developing countries. So if you want to develop your country, you have to go that way. When the ship finally docked in Belgium, he immediately traveled to Holland. There, his true transformation began. He studied, trained and worked, becoming a power electronics engineer. 
Surrounded by Europe's industry and technology, he built knowledge, skills, and networks. But even as he thrived, something deeper called him back, a desire to change his homeland. In 2005, Tadesse returned to Ethiopia, not just with ideas, but with financial backing from Holland, enough to ignite a dream, to establish Ethiopia's first automobile assembly company. They gave us about uh, a million euro. There was a grant, it's not a loan. So with that, and the investment of the partners and my investment, we, could, we went back to Ethiopia to start the business. So it means that we didn't get any financial support of any loan from local Ethiopian uh, to start the business. It's always was from outside. Holland Car was born. Its models carried Ethiopian pride in their names. Awash, Abai, Tekeze, rivers of strength and endurance, durable, affordable, and built for local conditions. They were the first truly Ethiopian cars. Families bought them, drivers cherished them, and Addis Ababa Street began to carry not just cars, but confidence. It was to show that we are able to do that because it's, at the end of the day, uh, the car industry is not rocket science. You know, if it, these things can be done uh, in Europe, in China, in America, whatever, so why don't you do it back home? So I think, so that was my idea. And having the, and just to emphasize that it was done, assembled by Ethiopians locally. So I push, gave them local name to show that and this, it was a big, not only for me, it was a big pride for a lot of people there because they were surprised because nobody was expecting that we were going supposed to do as we were the first car assembly plant in Ethiopia. As Ethiopians, we take pride in seeing cars made right here in our country by our own professionals. People call us Abai when they get into the car and they're often amazed to see that it's still on the road. Innovation stretched further. Holland Car introduced the Ahadu Bars, a name meaning unity. It was designed to carry people, connecting them as much as places. Even luxury models followed, proving that Ethiopia could compete with international brands. For a time, optimism grew. Ethiopia could be the Detroit of Africa. Uh, within the first three years, we were one of the highest tax pairs in Ethiopia. And within five years, we got the title authorized economic operator with gold status, which means in Ethiopia at that moment was the first five companies, which I was the first one with a gold status. So that was a big achievement within five years. And, you know, all my goods were, I can't bring them from the port freely and I can do. And so I was doing a little something because we are also doing some more things. Not only that, a social aspect, we are doing a lot of the other things. Dreams often collide with reality. Behind the pride of Holland car, lay mounting challenges. Ethiopia's financial system made growth nearly impossible. Foreign currency shortages delayed the import of essential parts. Banks were reluctant to lend. Interest rates were unbearable and bureaucracy slowed every decision. I was called medic office and told to stop the bus and take it out of the street because at that time it was giving free transport for people as uh, testing and take it from out of the road and stop it. Yes, and after that, there was a lot of pressure on me to leave the country. And uh, and yes, anyway, anyway, I think it was more or less decided that the, the whole project of Holland Car must be stopped. Holland Car had the demand, it had the talent, but it lacked the financial lifeline to keep its wheels turning. By the early 2010s, the company was drowning in debt. The assembly lines went quiet. Workers were sent home. Ironically, when Holland Car was declared bankrupt, it still possessed substantial assets, enough to recover and rebuild, but the financial support and institutional backing it desperately needed 
never came. And the man who once gave Ethiopia its first locally made cars was forced to leave, carrying both pride and heartbreak back to Holland. It's not only, uh, you know, the uh, vision, dream, which are closing, but it's also financially, you know, all, all the things which are back there have been lost. Not only me, <laughs> uh, the customers, the government, the country, and me, everybody has lost. But the road did not end. In Europe, Tadesse regrouped. He reflected and he realized the future would not be fueled by petrol, but by electricity. His journey took a new turn, this time to Kenya. 95% of the diaspora want to come back. Everybody is in his heart back home. Only that 5% because he cannot sustain or live here. So the only thing is convince them and back home. With third motors, he began building Africa's future in electric mobility. Clean, green and sustainable. His bold plan to manufacture EVs with up to 80% of parts produced locally. What Ethiopia could not sustain, Kenya was ready to embrace. Once again, his vision found fertile ground. Really, since I've met Tasima, he's obviously introduced me to some very influential people. He himself is very well connected. Um, and really, his concept of what he's bringing to Kenya, uh, I, I personally believe Kenya is crying out for that which is why there's been so much interest in his project. The support I get now, it's very high. It's sometimes I think it's frightened me because now it's for us to, to be, we get, I get all the support from anywhere. So it's now I have to deliver. So sometimes I get, I woke up early in the middle of the night and say, wow, would it be, can it be gone wrong? Holland car may be gone, but its legacy remains. The vehicles it produced still roll on Ethiopian roads. The workers it trained gained skills and pride. And the young people who once saw those cars now believe in African-made solutions. So we, we hope our company will benefit in the entire Kenya uh, when they, we start uh, assembling the vehicles here. Uh, so what I can say, uh, my government to support my our company. This is the first company in East Africa. So we are so glad. We are so happy. Ethiopia had the chance to become a regional automotive hub, but bureaucracy and financial restrictions drained momentum. The dream slipped away, yet the dreamer himself never stopped. Today, in Kenya, he is proving once again that Africa can build and this time in step with the future of mobility. Bringing knowledge, knowledge, and be open to entrepreneurs who want to do here the business and give them the opportunity and be there when there is a problem and get them rid of bureaucracy and corruption. If we, these things are done, I think uh, we'll grow this, That's the way how China grew up. That's the way how Europe is doing that. Why, don't, why not here? One month's road for Ethiopia to Holland, back to Ethiopia, and on to Kenya tells a story larger than himself. It is Africa's story of vision, obstacles, and resilience. I mean, certainly very experienced uh, what he's doing. We've obviously done quite a number of now presentations. And the one thing about Tasima, he does his research, okay? So even some of the very difficult questions, for example, batteries. So, you know, batteries in terms of what he's doing here in Kenya is very topical, but he's got the solution. And the very fact he's got a very strong background of delivering in Ethiopia, okay, which, has been, which was a phenomenal success. He's bringing that intellect, that intelligence. And also he's a very strong team. I mean, you know, I've met his team and I was nothing but impressed with the people that he's actually uh, bringing to the company. The one thing I'd also say to you is he is incredibly good with networking and with people. So even, for example, in this factory, which he's building in Mamehu, he's, he's already dealt with the local uh, community, the local tribes. And one of the things that impressed me, which is a tiny thing, but it's very important, 
the, the workforce that he actually had got building his factory. He, he, he offers them breakfast and lunch, and I just think that's a lovely quality. So he's actually um, in, inducing real um, uh, community spirit. Um, and uh, you know, and like you know, I think that's really important. Now I know Tedesse from Dot Motors already for 30 years. We worked together in uh, several projects, especially related to electric traction equipment. For all those years, he has been creative and uh, insisting on uh, realizing his goals. He doesn't get no for an answer. The road ahead is long, but as engineer Tadase Taseme proved, with courage and determination, nothing is impossible.